This is Franz. Welcome to the Series 7 podcast. This is the first episode, and in this we're going to be covering common stocks. This series of videos is going to be based on a progression of information that you are fed and expected to understand. Quite honestly, you need to make sure you understand each step because we will be building on the information that you learned and move forward from that information to the next step and the next video. This is the first podcast episode and the first video that covers the podcast episode. I'm going to try to explain in more detail than I did in the podcast some of the concepts we discussed. So let's move on, and I'm going to be starting about, first of all, how do we, how do we create common stock? Common stock is an institution that is formed through the creation of a corporation. And in the United States, a corporation is considered an entity, almost with all the powers of an individual, with the exception of it doesn't have the power to vote, it can't be thrown in prison. But corporations are formed by public charter. And in order to form a corporation... First, they need to create the corporate documents, and the corporate documents are the Articles of Incorporation. The Articles of Incorporation will set out who the organizers are, what the company is going to do, and various other aspects. The Secretaries of State of each state will have a uh, a document that you can go online and get and see what's required in the Articles of Incorporation in your state. And like I say, corporations are organized under state law. The most common state is Delaware in the United States for publicly traded corporations to organize under. And the reason they choose Delaware is because Delaware seems to have the largest amount of case law that applies to corporations. So there's not a lot of uncertainty in how cases will be resolved or the process for cases to be resolved in Delaware. Now, an interesting side note, I'm a sailor and I spend a lot of time sailing in European countries. And I notice in Turkey that there's a lot of boats that are registered in Delaware. So what they've done is they've gone to the United States, set up a corporation to own the asset. And the only asset they usually own is a, is a boat. They're doing this for taxation reasons, pure and simple, in order to avoid some of the taxes or importation taxes that would have to be paid if they actually imported the boat to Turkey and paid the taxes in Turkey. That's just a little side note that's not affected by the Series 7 examination. You definitely will not get a question on that on the Series 7 examination. The reason corporations choose one state over another state is primarily how they tax corporations. Some states tax corporations at a higher level than others, some at a lower level than others. Some charge taxes on the par value of the stock that is issued? Some don't. Every state is different. Now, common shares are also created by investment companies, and these are commonly referred to as mutual funds. We will have a full chapter that where we're talking about various mutual funds and how they're created, but just understand that shares or stock, and I use the two terms interchangeably, are created also by investment companies as well as uh, state law. And the investment companies are also regulated under state law and federal law. There's three types of stock that you are going to need to understand and what the differences are. They're pretty simple. There's authorized stock. An authorized stock is simply the stock that is authorized in the Articles of Incorporation, and some people call that the charter of the corporation. The charter of the corporation will authorize a specific number of authorized shares that the company may issue. Issued stock is simply 
the portion of the authorized stock that has been issued. I guess I should move down here. All right, so there we go. Authorized stock is set forth in the Articles of Incorporation, and it shows up in the balance sheet. When you look at a balance sheet, you will see in the details of the balance sheet the total authorized shares and the total issued and outstanding shares. And issued shares are simply the stock which has been issued and is outstanding. Now that stock is issued for money in the case of you as a stockholder buying a new issue of stock or it can also be issued to officers and directors and founders of the company for services rendered. Either way, there has to be a value placed on the stock when it is issued. Treasury stock is simply stock that has been issued but now has been repurchased by the corporation in the open market. And treasury stock is not used in calculating the earnings per share of a corporation. You need to make sure you understand that. Again, treasury stock does not have voting rights, that's one thing it doesn't have, and it's not used in the calculation of earnings per share. Sometimes you will see various classes of stock, and they could include a class A stock, for instance, that might retain all the voting rights, and that might be closely held by a family group, and then they might go to the public market and issue a Class B stock that has no voting rights but provides the bulk of the equity for the corporation. This is a way for companies to raise money on the public market yet not give up control. Now, these are just two examples, and investment bankers can pretty much create any class of stock that they can imagine. I doubt if you will really have any other questions that re relate to other various classes of stock. But just understand, this is just two examples of voting and a non-voting stock. But that doesn't limit what could be thought of and created by investment bankers. Now, the New York Stock Exchange doesn't favor multiple classes of stock. And it may choose not to list the company that has various classes of stock. It may or may not. It's pretty much at the discretion of the New York Stock Exchange. But they've gone on record as discouraging multiple classes of stock. Now, the NASDAQ and America exchanges don't hold themselves to that same standard as the New York Stock Exchange. And they may allow companies to list that have multiple classes of stock. Let's talk about par and no par stock. When it's related to common stock, par and no par don't really mean a whole heck of a lot. A par value is simply the stated value in the Articles of Incorporation that state what the par value is of the stock. It has nothing to do with market value. And the reason companies will put a very low value on par is quite often states will tax the corporation based on the par value of the stock. Some states require a par value. Some states don't require a par value. And remember, the par value really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. It, it's just a number, and it doesn't really mean anything except where the taxation of the corporation is set. No par stock is just that. It shows no value. There's no stated value on the shares. And again, the value of your shares in the market is going to be determined by the market expectations of the company's prospects not on any arbitrary value that's stated on the balance sheet with common stock. Now, when we get to preferred stock, it's a whole different story. Let's talk about...